weeks just fly by. Holy cow. <laughs> okay, so, where am I at today? So it's been a busy week. Lots is happening. And I'm here for the weekly update to give you an idea of where I'm at on a creative front and uh, see if it mirrors your own progress. So I've been writing and I've been working with people and it's a very strange occurrence at this particular point because it's not only uh, exciting to be in the swing of it again to some degree but also disconcerting because that swing is just so new literally did things a certain way for 15 years and none of those ways seem to be appropriate now so I've been writing things that <clears throat> if I had if I had 10 of each one of these songs, it would feel like it was a completed theme. It was like a completed world, but it never really happens that way. I'll get through, I'll get through a song, I'll not even get through it, but I'll get a, uh, a baseline for a song, a baseline meaning like the rudim rudimentary elements of what make that song tick potentially. And then by the end of it, the next thing that I move on to is so completely different that there's no continuity between it. And I think I struggle with um, fear in that sense because, because there's deadlines, right? Like all these great potential things that are coming up and all the things that uh, are being presented that in many ways are opportunities I've been waiting my whole life for. I just feel everything's moving so slow, creatively. And not just the development of the material is moving slow, but also my capacity to really truly participate in it. It's almost in line with all of the work that's gone into this process for the past year and all the fostering of self-love and appreciation and taking care of myself has slowed everything down to the point where I can't seem to get the same momentum that I once had. And then when that happens, what I end up doing is second-guessing material. And I, I start to fall back into the patterns of thinking, okay, well, you should make it a more strategically uh, procedural way of, of writing and really focus on what your end result is and, and then start to sketch it out and give yourself a, a skeleton that you can then fill in the blanks. But then by doing that, it's, it's, it's no fun. And when it's no fun, I think, there's a real palpable sense of, of you're full of shit that the audience picks up. And so inevitably I just keep going back to this one th sort of thing that I do during this period. And it's, it, it's frustrating to me because it's almost like it's the only thing that I really kind of groove on with all this glut of material. Yet it's, it's like, it's not what I'm supposed to be doing. That's, that's what I think, you know, I think I should be working on the moth. I should be working on orchestral music. I should be working on this other thing that is more in line with what the audience expects because I've invested so much money into this and, 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 you know, I'm afraid of, of it all falling apart and then fear as a motivator for material always ends in in things that you're not proud of, you know? 
but the the biggest hurdle is almost defining what it is that is important enough for you to put the effort into and this is what I'd spoke about in one of the past updates how it's easy to make the assumption that or at least convince yourself that these ideas that you have are worth the pursuit. And then when you really stand back and look at it, you're like, okay, no, that's rooted in, in fear, or that's rooted in petulance, or that's rooted in wanting to impress, or that's rooting to, rooted in uh, wanting to stay relevant, or any number of things. But then when that gets put aside, the changes that have come along in my life have, have made it such that I think, okay, well, what, what's worth it for you to put the effort into? And I don't mean that in, a, in the way it sounds, because how it could come across is, is ungrateful, and I'm certainly not that. But I think, no, if you're really going to invest yourself into a piece of work, you have to be, you have to come at it with your whole heart. And in order to do that, you've really got to define where you're at and, and what it is that you like. And so when I go back to all this music that I'm trying to write, and then when, when I just get frustrated at myself with that, and I go work on this weird stuff that even me, myself, I don't love, but at least it's interesting to me. And then I started going, well, look at the time. I got, you know, time's running out. You got to get back to the other stuff. And that ends up making the process even more um, uh, stunted. You know, it's like you finally give yourself a break. And, and so I was thinking the other day, it's like, well, what's the reason why you're, you're pushing? And I'm like, well, you've got, you're not financially independent so in order to make sure that this boat stays afloat so you can continue doing the things that you've planned to do you've got to generate income and in in the ways that things are to do that it requires a type of thinking and strategy that is really frustrating because I think left to my own devices I would just spend a lot of time just just trying to figure it out. And in the beginning, I'm like, oh, it's a year and a half and I'll do that, but that's, it's like not enough time. Then again, every now and then I, uh, over the past week, I've hit on an idea that I think, oh, this is gonna come really quickly, actually. But then it's, it just, it's like right at your fingertips and it just goes away. So how I've been trying to structure it so that I can be more efficient is there's key components to each one of these projects that I'm doing. The Moth or Casualties or Power Nerd or Continuing Dream Peace or, or you know, learning how to do the Atmos mixing or, and it's like, uh, so I schedule meetings with people that are involved with those projects so that it forces me to confront parts of the project that I feel inclined to procrastinate on. Storyboard, for example, for the moth. It's it, to commit to the story is such a big part of the process and so frightening in a way because there's so much um, expectation on it you know even on my own side I've I've put so much effort into even for these uh, YouTube or the podcast and talking about the process like impregnates it with a type of expectation and importance on my own side that to commit to the story is like really difficult because it it's like is it good enough is it worthy of, of the effort that goes into it? Is it going to look ridiculous in light of how much, you know, I've, I've been talking about it? But by committing to having people who are involved with it say, okay, let's do this now. Like in three days, this is gonna be done. 
And whether or not it is, whether or not it gets refined from that point, I'm finding that almost the only way that I'm finding actual progression is to thrust myself into awkward situations creatively. Ones that my fear would uh, suggest I procrastinate on indefinitely. And maybe that's my, even when I was saying a second ago about wanting the process to have more time, more time, more time, is just another example of that mechanism. Maybe I'm just, I'm afraid to commit to any of it because it all means you know if you never if you never complete something like we had said in one of the last updates then you never have to face whether or not it's it's not that good or if it's not right or so maybe there's a part of that and the other side of it and this is I think in speaking it out loud here is almost the most uh, the most pressing part of it is I fear the intensity you know it's hand in hand with with personal development comes a type of self-acceptance that puts things into a perspective when it comes to family or friends or what the real uh, priorities in your life should be and where your energy should be focused and in order for me to be effective at those parts of my life and, and these responsibilities that are in my world, I have to be disciplined and calm and uh, collected and rational. Yet, in order to do the work that seems that my intuition tells me needs to be done, it's like it requires the opposite. It requires me to to let go of that, even temporarily. And and there's a part of me that's just like, man, is it really that cut and dried? It's like either you have your shit together and you're able to function and you're able to, you know, be a dependable ally for the people that you love and for the people in your world, or you're just you're just a basket case and you're creatively in that zone where emotions are raw and you're unhinged and you're not sleeping and it's like unhealthy, right? But I feel that creating from the vantage point of, of discipline and control, it's, it's like it doesn't work for me. And so it's almost like you have to decide two things, like how much you're willing to let go and how much the fear of actually letting go of that control is still that you don't trust that you're going to make the right decision, right? Like you don't trust that you're going to come out of it intact. I know that in the past when I've ventured down those, those creative roads which this seems to imply is part of what I need to do. In the past, I came out of it really like, like shattered. So it's like, well, your job is to do the thing that you do. And the thing that you do is, it involves that raw and visceral connection to your own emotions and to sound and that's probably why I'm hesitant you know and to be fair there's just there hasn't been opportunity there's just so much to do there's like you know NAM show and interviews and, and podcast and building and setting up and learning and you know, delay offsets for the speakers and why isn't this one working and you know, there's all these things that require a real presence of mind but they're not creative things I mean, you could argue they're creative in some sense but they're not creative in the sense that 
being willing to surrender to the um, to the rawness of emotions requires and it seems like as much as I'd like to think that the two can coexist they don't seem to at least at this point so yes I've been writing yes I've been creating yes I've been strategizing the creativity and, and all the things that go into it but it's with a sense of duty rather than a sense of passion and currently at this stage I'm confused as to how to integrate those two things without one uh, sacrificing the other right that being said the whole process if I distill it down to one phrase or one um, state of, of, of being you know I'd said that in the past a big part of the process was was identifying what its intent was for me so then on a real practical level I can just fill in the it's like coloring it in you know if you're not you're just putting color everywhere but if you're able to say oh it's a chicken then you're able to say okay we'll give him a red beak or, or, or what have you and the skeleton is the intent and so if I was to distill this it's trusting intuition and going with intuition and recognizing the difference between intuition and ego I guess you know it's so easy to attribute things to intuition that in hindsight we're just like oh you're afraid or and so it's a slight but distinctive difference between those two things and intuition is f fostering that is is it just takes time it takes time and right now it's like every day it's like oh it's another update it's another week's gone by another month's gone by another and I'm like, I'm like, ah, oh, the time's moving too quick. It's too quick. I gotta hold on to it. I gotta, I gotta be grateful for it. I gotta utilize it. I gotta. <laughs> Yet again, this kind of newfound sense of self-respect has come with a lot of times where I'm like, dude, you know what you need to do is just fucking sit on the couch and watch some TV, play some guitar, relax. And sheepishly, I admit, not to, but to me, sheepishly, I admit, most of the time that's the decision I've been making. I'm like, oh my God, time's running out. Oh my God, you gotta get in the studio. Oh my God, you gotta start really knuckling down. You're not gonna finish it unless you, and then I'm just like, I'm just gonna watch TV. And I do. That's like so new and it's so weird. And the last thing I'll say is, amidst that, I keep thinking, you're not writing anything. There's nothing happening. And then when I look at what I've been writing, I'm like, during all of this, I've been writing constantly. There's tons of stuff. Tons of stuff. It's like so weird. It's like I think that nothing's happening. But it's all happening. Almost the funniest part of it is, you can't really, you can intellectualize it as much as you want. You can, you can analyze it and participate in it and draw conclusions about it and, you know, make assumptions about your role in it or anything. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's like it happens despite you. Not to spite you, not to spite you, but it happens despite you. So all the fretting and wringing of one's hands and all of this, it's just, I mean, I guess there's something deliciously romantic about it. <laughs> because really, it's going to happen regardless. And what it's going to be is what it's going to be. And you know full well that the decisions that you've made in the past and that you will make this time are ultimately 
going to err on the side of what seems to be the most authentic. So as opposed to, maybe not as opposed to, maybe at this stage, it's just the experimentation. So I try a lot of things, experiment with a lot of things, and you still have time. And then there's no doubt when you start to run out of time that the adrenaline that comes with that will foster that age-old sense of urgency that will allow you to say, okay, clearly, throughout this past couple of years, this, 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 this and this goes there, this, 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 this goes there, and then you finish it. And that just becomes a, that just becomes a, a disciplinary exercise. You know, at that point, it's just about, okay, so now I know what to do. So as much as the inner um, paranoid neurotic in me is running in circles going, oh, it's not going to work, oh, nothing's going to happen, oh, you're going to go broke, oh, blah. The other part of me is just like, no, we're doing it. All good, don't worry. So, yeah. Don't worry. Whew. We gotta go to the NAM show next week. Some cool things there. There's something I've been working on there that is beautiful, and I can't wait to actually get the final product. And I'll show you, you'll see it. But it's super cool. I'm in the middle of a session right now. It's going great. When you're working with people who are really great, it's nice too because you realize how much participating in their energy is almost the, the most important part of collaboration. Like listening to them. I'm going to stop talking now. I hope your project's going well. And uh, I'll see you next week, all right?